So we all want to escape the burdens and the chaos of life sometimes. Most of us, though, sadly, can't seem to find the time or the space to truly get away and to get that sacred time away. The gospel text today, it provides us a glimpse, just a glance at a unique dichotomy going on, at a need of both people seeking out, looking to be healed and touched and fed, burdens lifted, and also the need of the disciples, the ones often doing that healing and that feeding to also receive that same healing and rest and peace, that time away. The disciples and others who followed Jesus were quickly finding out the tremendous needs that surrounded Jesus everywhere that he traveled to. Now, what the gospel reading leaves out today is just that, those demands placed upon Jesus, the feeding of 5,000 women and men and children in a field outside of Galilee, and then Jesus walking on water, attempting to instill in his disciples a sustaining, trusting faith. Simply put, though, the world and its systems have failed the people who flock to Jesus. They're vulnerable and in need, and Jesus has compassion on them, even in the midst of his own exhaustion. But what do we, you and I, do with this gospel today? Jesus does still offer something unique and needed to us today, but what is it, and how do we get it? And I ask this because most of the people that flocked to Jesus, who came out to find him and seek him out, they had tangible needs. They had immediate needs of food, healing, community, belonging, the lifting of burdens, and they had nowhere to go. They didn't have an unemployment office. They didn't have a food pantry. They didn't have community and government assistance to help them. They had no one else to turn to. But we, we do. We have hospitals. We have stores to buy food and clothing. And if we can't afford to buy food and clothing, we have food pantries, and we have places to get the help that we need. We have police. We have fire departments. We have counselors and therapists. We have support groups. We seemingly have everything that we need in our own community. So what does faith in Jesus still offer to us? Is faith still relevant to you and me today? Now, what I really want to tell you today is this. If you believe that your every need is being met in tangible ways by the people and the systems that exist around you, then the gospel message may not have anything to offer to you. If you don't see God at work in the people and in the systems that are there to help you, then the gospel message may not have anything to offer to you. You may find nothing relatable in this message of destitute people flocking to Jesus in and around Galilee. Faith may seem like a good idea, it may, see, it may seem like something good to embody, but it might just not truly connect with you. However, if you find that people and systems are too often flawed, if you find that they can't meet your every need in life, if you find that things like belonging, acceptance, grace, forgiveness, are often too difficult to find in the world, then the gospel is for you. 
and me and all of us who can believe that, who can believe that the world and the people, even well-intentioned people around us, often fail to meet the deepest needs that we have. And I found that. I found that even well-intentioned people and well-intentioned institutions can still leave us in want. I found that there are times when no one, no agency, no organization can truly provide the hope and the help that we need. There are times that we feel helpless and empty, even with a myriad of people and places that can provide for our needs. So I think the world that we live in, there is a gap in the world that we live in, an invisible gap between people and things in the world meant to help us, meant to give us the tangible basic needs of life and us actually having those needs met. I think that we have a gap in the world. We have people and systems there to help us. But do we always get that help? And is it the sustaining, lasting, eternal help that we might truly need? So perhaps Jesus bridges that gap. Perhaps faith bridges that gap. Perhaps faith gives to us something uniquely intimate, uniquely compassionate. In Jesus, we do find something very holy that we need, something very fulfilling, something restorative. But we also have to be careful that we don't view Jesus and faith as some kind of helpful magic that can sprinkle down from heaven upon us. Faith isn't magic, and Jesus isn't a genie. Faith, though, does allow us to see beauty in the pain, purpose in the trials. The gospel today isn't simply about people finding healing and community and food, because being without those things Lacking health, lacking mental fitness, lacking decent clothing, lacking housing, lacking food. Lacking those things doesn't mean that you're not blessed. Lacking those things doesn't mean that God has bypassed you. You know, when we think about it, all of the people whom Jesus healed and fed, they would eventually need food again. They would eventually become ill again and die. Jesus was not attempting to eradicate all pain and illness and hunger in the world. Jesus was meeting immediate needs with compassion and love that those acts of healing and feeding might lead people to a faith in him to provide every deep human need that they would have. He healed them not to provide some kind of lasting, eternal fix, but he healed them and fed them in the hope that they might find a deeper faith, a trusting faith in him to provide every deep longing and need that they would have. A faith in Jesus as our Savior is meant to connect us to a vine, the vine, to the one who can give to us life. Life. And by that, we mean hope. We mean peace. We mean belonging. We mean forgiveness. We mean being loved unconditionally. Value. Dignity. Those things, those holy things that remain when you no longer can depend on people and the things of the world to provide for you. When all of those immediate tangible things 
that you seek out every day, maybe even that you build an identity around. When those things fail you, who and what will you depend on? My hope is that I might be like any of those desperate people who followed Jesus, who sought him out wherever they could find him, who begged him to heal them, to feed them, to touch them. I want to be like those people who knew that they needed something beyond what the community and the people around them could give to them. I want to be like someone who knows that I need something lasting and eternal to fill me and help me and heal me. My hope is that we might always recognize that the world and even well-intentioned people and systems will at times let us down. And they'll fail to fill the void inside of us, that void that needs unconditional love and faith and hope and belonging, that void that God alone can fill. In the busyness of life, in the midst of all the things of life that we seem to depend on, that we build an identity upon, May we stop long enough to remember that. May we stop long enough to know that though we have so many needs met in the world that we live in, the deepest longings that we have inside can only be met in Jesus. May we stop long enough to remember that. Amen.